always a bit of a game of patience with, with lions this time of the day, especially when they've got full bellies like, like these two ladies. Remember months ago, I can't even remember when it was, probably four or five months ago, I was with Rexon. He was presenting, I was on camera with him, and we had the Mapoko males lying right next to the road, not far from, from Gauri Wartal on Gauri Cutline. And we waited and we waited and we waited and we every time thought they might move and one would maybe roll over, one would maybe walk a few steps. Eventually they just slept even late into the night. Take it nice and easy. Might not talk that much. I'll mention a few things every now and again. Alex might say a few things. <laughs> Marco might say a few things. Maybe one or two things pop down to the water hole and we have a little look from that side. I'm just going to take a nice, lazy Sunday afternoon and see what develops with these lines. So far, it doesn't look like too many game drive vehicles on the way, so hopefully we can, we can spend some time with them. Just looking at the lioness in the foreground just now, a paw, especially a left paw, you can actually see the nails a little bit. And that's not something that you often get to see with with your large cats. Occasionally when they're feeding, you really see the nails when they're really gripping onto the carcass to hold on. But otherwise those nails are retractable, as you know with all cats except cheetah. That means that when they're walking, standing, whenever they're on their feet really, the nails never actually make contact with the sand or the earth or the, wherever they're walking. It's only if they're really running that the four nails in the front grip into the soil a bit to give them extra purchase. And of course when they jump onto whatever they're trying to hunt or catch, they use those four claws, but then especially the dew claw, the equivalent of our thumb if you want, comes into play. The dew claw sits a little bit further up the foot, so even when they're running it doesn't touch the sand. So that claw is always literally sharp as a needle. And lions are strong enough, the tendons and the, the sort of the, the physical evolution of the animal makes them strong enough that they can support all of their weight on one dew claw. So that means a lioness could do a pull-up hanging on her thumb. That makes any sense. And that claw is very important when they're starting to hold onto things, trip things, try and climb onto a buffalo or a giraffe. That uh, dew claw and of course all other 19 claws that are left in the three, four feet come into play. But it's not often that you actually see it. This is quite interesting. There you can see it a little bit. I'll just get my binoculars and have a proper look as well. Ah, oh, it's stunning. If you actually look carefully, just want to make sure it's a little bit of a funny angle. Just to explain, I'm just looking through it very carefully with binoculars. You can't actually physically see the nail. Ah, these lionesses are healthy. They're in very good condition. You can see a little bit the indentation of the nail through the hair. But the black that you're seeing there is actually little tufts. Now you see that with lions, but it's just very pronounced. So I think partly because she's in very good condition, she's very healthy. Essentially what that does is it almost gives the appearance of nails. Maybe it's something to do with, uh, compared to humans sometimes painting their fingernails to show it off better. Maybe those black tufts are just there to make the nails look more prominent even when you don't see them. So it's sort of a reminder of the weaponry that's hidden in there. But just the way she's lying with the foot slightly splayed out like that, she's pronouncing it a bit more just because the hair is actually pushed out, pushed out by the nails. We were looking from the other side, sort of at the foot from underneath, you'd be able to see the nails now. Look at that. Happy, lazy, sleepy lions. Oh, they're two beautiful, beautiful cats. Now, can you imagine the kind of genetic line if you want that starting now 
or continuing, depending on how you look at it. But with Mapojo males, obviously their fathers before them were in the area as well. Very interesting history of it that was put together on the, I read on the website the other day. A lot of effort put into it. Anyway, my point was, I'm thinking away now about other lions, but the point is you've got lionesses of this caliber, beautiful, beautiful lionesses. Neither of them look that old. I must say, if you look at their faces, again, we'll still find out the exact history. Over the next while, we'll probably get all the details on them. But just looking at them now as lionesses that are beautiful and that we don't know at all. Both of them in very good condition. A little bit old if I look at the hair and the faces. But then also I look at the body, look at the legs. Both cats. You can still see a little bit of those spot markings. Look at the back legs of the lioness in the front. And all the four legs of the lioness in the back. You can clearly still see those sort of shadows of, of the spot marks that they have when they're younger. Now again, some lionesses retain those spots their whole life. I've seen lionesses 10, 12 years old that have that. But typically it's a sign that they're not too old yet. Now if we can see them yawning properly, I'll actually have a look just now. I took one photo quickly earlier when um, one lioness yawned. And you can have a look at their teeth. And that'll give an indication of what kind of shape they are.